Well, we're on correspondent Patrick Falk is now joining us live from Hong Kong for the very latest on this. And Patrick, thanks very much for talking to us this evening. So a very volatile situation there and a lot happening still at the university where many students actually try to escape uh, through the sewage system, we believe. Uh, and e all of this even as the police is asking them to come out. But we've also seen visuals of heavy handedness by the police once uh, protesters actually came out, students came out, they were, mis uh, you know, they, were, they were beaten up by, at some instances by the police as well. But it goes the other way around as well as protesters are also uh, doing a pushback when it comes to the police. Yeah, well, there are reports saying that some protesters might have tried to escape via the sewers, but they haven't been confirmed, and uh, authorities here have warned that that is a very bad idea and would be very dangerous uh, indeed. But, you know, after much of the violence that we saw uh, overnight, last night, it has actually been a relatively uh, peaceful scene here, certainly for the last few hours. We've actually seen a number of protesters come out and surrender peacefully as the chief executive uh, called for earlier today. It's uncertain just how many people are left inside. Earlier there were reports saying that uh, about 100 people were holed up inside the campus, which is just about two or 300 meters uh, behind me. But uh, it would seem that numbers are dwindling. We're getting media reports saying that they are running out of medical supplies, running out of water, and running out of food. So it, it does look as though things might end very soon, and it, it looks as though it's going to end really quite quietly after the dramatic few days we've had. Right, Patrick, but also, of course, the question of a new police chief. We believe that there's a new police chief. There are comments now from the U.S. and the Chinese government has blamed the U.S. for sort of uh, pushing the protests further, in a sense, blaming them uh, for what's happening in Hong Kong as well. But there is a massive trust deficit with the new police chief coming in. Uh, is Hong Kong hoping to restore some of that? Well, if you're asking, are things going to change significantly uh, under Chris Tang, it would seem unlikely. Uh, we heard that he wants to rebut uh, what he called fake news, but really there's been a lot of misinformation on both sides. And there was a very charged report that was uh, released in the Financial Times today saying that, quoting one police officer saying that uh, his superiors had, had essentially been saying that they can do whatever they want and their superiors will cover for them, and they're not going to get in trouble even if they shoot at protesters. That may be one of the reports that he would want to rebut, certainly today, after the events that we've had over the last few days, when we have seen, with our own eyes, police using what many people would regard as being excessive force. Uh, the other thing that he talked about in an interview, Chris Tang said that he thinks that while many people in, in Hong Kong seem to condone the violence, police need to get on with the job uh, and get on with policing and that he thinks that uh, people need to get behind the police uh, and not support the protest movement but of course as we know uh, there is still a lot of people that essentially blame the government for what's happened and don't entirely see this as being the fault of the protesters or rioters even as some some people might describe them as